Hello and good evening, friends. The fact that you're watching News Sunday shows how seriously you take what's happening around you and in the country. So let's have an engaging one hour of news conversation. We are the only country in the world, perhaps, which has a Maharashtra inside a Rashtra. And Maharashtra is the midst, is in the midst of a crucial election to its state assembly. In fact, politically speaking, the weight of Maharashtra is second only to Uttar Pradesh, with the state sending 48 MPs to the Lok Sabha against 80 of UP. Today is an even more important day for both the sides of the political divide. The ruling Mahayuti and the opposition Mahavikas Aghadi came out with their respective manifestos of promises they would keep if they came to power. The BJP calls it Sankal Patra. The MVA Maharashtra Nama. Do you get that subtle nuance there between the two names? Between chaste Hindi Sankal Patra and Persian influenced Maharashtra Nama like Akbar Nama. This might be more than a casual naming actually. It reflects the orientation and target audiences of both the sides. But more interesting is how the freebie politics unleashed by the Congress for which it is paying heavily and people in some states like Karnataka and Himachal are paying even more heavily has caught BJP's fancy too. In the winner takes all elections, it gets cutthroat and the BJP too is showing signs of getting influenced. The one outlier in the manifestos is that the BJP has also promised to bring an anti-conversion law in Maharashtra. Let's let the focus tonight be on the second most important political state in the country. Here are the headlines first. Kathor se kathor kanun, jiske karan dharmantaran sunnye ho jaye, is prakar ka kanun lekar. Union Home Minister Amit Shah releases Maha Manifesto vows to bring in anti-conversion law if BJP is voted to power. Uttar Pradesh yeah. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath tears into Samajwadi Party brands at Factory of Mafia calls Akhilesh the CEO of the factory. Prime Minister Modi leads BJP charge in pole bound Jharkhand, old mega road show in Jharkhand, Ranchi. During Priyanka Gandhi's roadshow in Vayanad, Congress workers clash with CRPF Jawats. Uh, the high voltage Maharashtra elections are just days away and it's raining promises as both Mahayuti and the Maharashtra Vikas Aghadi pull out all the stops to woo voters. BJP's Sankal Pat pledges 25 lakh jobs, financial aid for women and a host of farmer benefits with Home Minister Amit Shah declaring it's the people's vision for Maharashtra. Not to be outdone, Congress and the MVA hit back with their Maharashtra Nama, promising caste census Rs 4,000 for job seekers and cash support for young women. The countdown is on, but will these promises seal the deal with the Maharashtra voters? Look at the details and I come back on the other side with a panel of guests for a nice conversation. With Maharashtra elections just over a week away, it is raining freebies in Maharashtra as Mahayuti and Mahavikas Aghadi launched their manifestos. Home Minister Amit Shah unveiled Sankalp Patra, releasing a list of 25 promises in the manifesto, focusing on ambitious development goals and financial support. And the whole of the Maharashtra people of Maharashtra has been shown in this Sankalp Patra. Our 
एनडीए की जो सरकार महायुति की सरकार चल रही है उसने किसानों का सम्मान करने की बात की है गरीबों का कल्याण करने को जमीन पर उतारने का काम किया है महिलाओं का स्वाभिमान बढ़ाने के लिए हम योजनाएं लेके आए हैं और विरासतों का पुनरुत्थान करने का काम भी महायुति सरकार ने During the launch, Home Minister Shah said that the manifesto promises to reflect people's aspirations for Maharashtra. BJP's Sankalp Patra promised a comprehensive plan for development and growth, keeping women, farmers, and youth at the center, with strong emphasis on rural development, employment generation, and financial assistance. Key promises include a generation of employment for 25 lakh people. Initiatives include women empowerment via the ongoing Ladli Behna Yojana by providing rupees 2100 monthly allowance and empowering 50 lakh women as Lakhpati Didi. While manifesto also focuses on farmers outlining a series of welfare programs for the state. Meanwhile, Congress President Malikarjun Kharge released Maha Aghadi Manifesto listing five pillars of progress and development for the state. हमने 3 लाख तक के कृषि ऋण माफ करे हम नौकरी चाहने वाला युवाओं को 4000 रुपए का मंथली स्टाइपेंड दे रहे हैं ताकि वो नौकरी के तलाश में रहकर बहुत अपना समय गुजारता है और उसको पैसे नहीं रहते जहाँ नौकरियाँ आते हैं एम्प्लॉयमेंट की नोटिफिकेशन होते हैं पहुँच नहीं सकते उसी लिए उसको अपने चार हजार रुपये मंथली स्टाइपेंड देंगे स्किल डेवलपमेंट में भी अगर कहीं उनको कहीं रखना है रख देंगे ये काम हम दे रहे हैं From caste-based census to empowering women, MVA outlined a series of welfare schemes in its manifesto. In view of Mahayuti's focus on women voters of the state, MVA plans to provide rupees one lakh to girls reaching age of 18, rupees three thousand allowance to women under Mahalakshmi Yojana. To woo young voters, MVA promises recruitment for 2.5 lakh job vacancies and rupees 4,000 monthly stipend to all young job seekers. With Mahayuti and Mahaaghadi releasing manifestos, it will be interesting to see which party manages to grab the votes of people in the single-phase elections in Maharashtra. All right. Uh, if you heard those details, it's interesting how many of uh, those promises, which qualified as freebie culture till last couple of elections, are now actually finding their way into the BJP manifesto. Also, for example, farm loan waivers. Uh, uh, in fact, if you look at what uh, the Maha Vikas Agadi is, uh, uh, is is promising, they are saying if the farmers pay back their loans, they are going to get additional fifty thousand rupees. While the BJP is promising. Full farm loan waiver. Joining me in this conversation, we have uh, Pooja Mishra, nationalist spokesperson of the Samajwadi Party. She is joining us live from uh, Prayagraj. We also have Chandrasekhar Jha, Shiv Sena, Uddhav Sena leader, and uh, he is joining us live from Mumbai. We have Kapil Madan, advocate, leans uh, towards uh, the the Congress and the opposition. and he is joining us live from delhi we also have bridge mohan shivastav chief national spokesperson of the ncp ajit pawar faction and krishna hegde spokesperson of the shiv sena shinde faction essentially all sides of the political spectrum in maharashtra on this panel and uh, i want to begin with sanju verma national spokesperson of the bjp typically i begin with the opposition side but i'm for a reason starting with you sanju because uh, when i was going through the respective manifestos i found it interesting that it seems that the bjp is succumbing to the freebie politics essentially pushed by the congress party are you really getting psyched out in the manner in which all these promises have come in in the bjp manifesto also you know uh, abhishek i always say that the devil is always in the detail 
Uh, you know, for instance, let me uh, say one uh, important uh, thing because, you know, uh, the appeasement of uh, the Muslim community has been doing the rounds now for the last 72 hours. Uh, somebody the other day told me, you know, Andhra Pradesh has 4% uh, reservation for Muslims. So if uh, the Maha Vinash Agadi is promising 10% reservation to Muslims in Maharashtra, what's the big deal? The big deal is this. 4% reservation for Muslims in Andhra Pradesh is as per what the Supreme Court diktat is. It is well within the uh, relevant norms. But when you talk about 10% reservation for Muslims in Maharashtra, despite the fact that the 52% upper cap pertaining to reservation in Maharashtra has already been reached, then you are not only trying to undermine the credibility of the Supreme Court, but you are brazenly trying to fool the minority community. upper cap Maharashtra reservation का रीच हो चुका है तो आप सिर्फ तुष्टिकरण की राजनीति कर रहे हैं with an eye on the Muslim vote bank and I'll tell you something I always say that there is again a very thin line between welfare politics and freebies if the BJP says we are going to increase the uh, payout for Larki Bahin Yojana from 1500 rupees to 2100 rupees a month that is not a freebie because Maharashtra has a budget in excess of 8.5 lakh crore, a budget deficit of nearly 40 or 45,000 crore, a GSDP of 45 lakh crore. You know, so this is a very rich state and 2100 rupees per month is not really going to affect the taxpayer, the ordinary middle class or the exchequer. But when Karnataka says we will give 2 kg free rice to people and it fails to deliver that promise and then after the elections are over and they come back to power, they say, oh, we to 10 kg of ka chawal har mahine Karnataka ki mahilaon ko dena chate the. But you know what? The Food Corporation of India is under the control of the central government. They are not willing to release rice stock. Whereas Food Corporation of India, set up in 1965, is not meant to fulfill the appeasement politics of Congress. It okay. is meant to maintain buffer stock of food grains in case of contingencies with an eye on food security. Okay. So there is a very thin line between welfare politics and freebies. Jab aap chadar ke andar pao rakkar deliver karte ho, usse welfare politics kaha jata hai. Sa Jab aap chadar ke bahar pao fasarte ho, that is called freebie politics. Sanju. And when you are not able to marry grand vision with seamless execution, that Sa is called Sanju. freebie politics. But in the case of Narendra okay, Modi, Sanju. grand vision and seamless execution have always Sanju, come let together. Sanju, let me come in with, with a counter question. You know, there, there's something called principle. In principle, the BJP stands against freebie politics. And in fact, just a few days back, when we had uh, a slip happening on the part of uh, Congress President Mallikarjun Kharge about uh, this freebie culture not taking them anywhere, you were the happiest on the panel. You were there. And today you are saying, okay, okay. fine, Maharashtra is a rich state, it can afford. So, I mean, in principle, are you sort of compromising? I want to grill you on, uh, grill you on that a bit and then move on. You know, uh, Abhishek, as an anchor, I'm glad you have such a great memory and you're free to grill me as much as you want. I'm not going to play the victim card. I just want to say one thing. You know, please look at the entire picture. Do not miss the woods for the trees. And in just 30 seconds, I'll give you two examples. The Atal Setu, the Mumbai Trans Harbour Link project was conceptualized way back in 1961 when Pandit Nehru was the Prime Minister. It was finished in 2023 after a good 62 long years because, you know, the Congress, despite being in power for the longest time, both in the state of Maharashtra and in the centre, was twiddling its thumb and did nothing. And the BJP led double engine Sarkar, Eknath Shinde, Devendra Fandavis, and of course Prime Minister Modi, they brought the Trans Harbour Link project to fruition. He said, Phoebe politics nahi kaha jata. He said, good governance kaha jata hai. And in 10 seconds more, do you remember the year 1988? Okay. Rajiv Gandhi laid the foundation of the Navi Mumbai airport. From 1988 to 2014, 26 saalon tak, sabse zada samay tak, 19 saal, un 26 saalon mein se, Congress satta mein thi, kendra mein, Navi Mumbai airport ka kuch nahi hua. Thanks to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, next year the Navi Mumbai airport will become a pleasant reality. Okay. So the BJP does not engage in freebie politics. It puts development agenda at the forefront. But we also want to uplift okay. people who are marginalized, who are poor, who are vulnerable. And what is wrong hai? After all, we are a welfare state. Okay. So essentially what you are saying is there is a thin line between welfare economics and uh, uh, freebie culture. And uh, BJP is fully aware of that line or not crossing that line. Um, exactly. Kapil Madan, you agree with Sanju Verma? And if yes, to what extent? If not, to what extent? 
So Abhishek, let me say it very unequivocally here. You know, Sanjeev, Sanju wants to use a different yardstick when it comes to you know BJP, and she wants to use a different yardstick when it comes to the opposition. While you know BJP announces you know some you know uh, schemes in their manifesto, they will say it is a development agenda and <coughs> a welfare state. Therefore, we are entitled to do so. When the same thing is announced by the opposition, then you know Sanju would say it's you know and coming from the prime minister that it is a revdi culture. Now let me let me you know say a very uh, uh, tell our viewers a very important you know insights of it. Do you remember when the Food Security Act was passed? It was passed during UPA two. You know which was the uh, which uh, uh, political party opposed the Food Food Security Act? It was the BJP. And let me tell you, when Prime Minister says that you know we are giving free rations to about eighty crores of Indian, do you know under which act this uh, ration is paid? It is paid under the Food Security Act, the same act which was vehemently opposed by BJP to then day. So all I say is that while you know it is one thing to you know uh, 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 speak on the China. Talk about Maharashtra. Speak. Just a minute. No, don't interrupt, Sanju. Sanju, don't interrupt. Sanju, I'll come to you. You will get your chance to rebut. Let him complete. 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 I'll come to you, Sanju. Let him complete. I get your anxiety. Just completely uh, ruining Karnataka. Sanju, we have an hour to discuss Maharashtra. Let him complete. He has to go early. Let him complete. Your anxiety, please hold on. Your anxiety for a minute. Oh, I have asked a question on freebie versus welfare. It applies to the entire country. Let him complete. Yes. No, in fact, the fact, the fact that Sanju is getting anxious because Sanju is getting okay. Sanju, let him complete. You get to rebut only after him. Now, no, I'm not allowing that. Sanju, please. I'm not allowing that. I'm not allowing that. Sanju, let him complete. Well, Sanj, while Sanju was making you know terrible allegations against the opposition that had you know no meaning, no factual or you know other kind of you know factual support, let me just say what is an admitted fact. While Sanju wants to say it is the opposition who is indulging in uh, freebies, then I would just like to remind Sanju our national debt has gone five times in the past ten years. Now, if you really want to praise your you know government, Sanju was using Sanju. Sanju was Please using Sanju was WhatsApp using Pano Chadar Pano Ara Ara Chakla Sanju Sanju hold on uh, let, let's have a structured conversation I have more important questions to ask Sanju let him complete Sanju you, you got your good two minutes of opening let him complete okay Kapil 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 if I get the reports right then the last which is our which is our country the country has been some 2.5 crore which is about 5 crore so you when you say we are the 6th largest stock market पसारने चाहिए जितनी चादर जो हमारा नेशनल डेट ढाई लाख करोड़ हो गया तो आई डोंट नो वेदर संजू वॉज कपिल madan you are falling into a trap kapil madan don't fall into a trap of numbers with sanju i can tell you our debt to gdp ratio is fantastic if you compare the situation globally sanju i am moderating sanju i am mod sanju i am moderating let me do my job let me do my job kapil you are falling into a trap kapil listen to me you are falling into a trap of sanju don't go into numbers you can't beat her on that but more importantly kapil sanju is getting anxious and i think you are also are trying to cover it up are baba she is she is getting away with it i don't want you to let her do that abhishek allow me abhishek allow me i am allowing you to the government employees of himachal pradesh the point is the point is sanju wants to in himachal pradesh in just 12 months so what the happens is that any so, government of himachal pradesh sanju we are not discussing himachal pradesh I, now you want I, to discuss maharashtra I, then you yourself I, go to himachal pradesh I, not allowed I, I, let let's focus on what we are having a conversation on which is maharashtra which is the manifesto of the respective sides and kapil again telling you don't get into debt to gdp debate focus on maharashtra and my question to you kapil because i know you have to go kapil my question to you you were talking about food security act you know this whole rights based approach Listen to me, Kapil. I'm taking the question forward. I'm taking the question forward. Just a minute. Hold on. Hold on. 
the problem to be on the debate is sanju wants to compensate logic with noise but unfortunately you, you can you know drift the, the debate by making unnecessary noise because yes no, you don't have a counter as is such to the issue that yes i am being debated no, the and that's yes. the example is the chief I minister so or so okay can i take the debate forward can i take the conversation yes, sir, forward for god's sake i have a very important question follow up question of kapil madan kapil listen to me you cannot compete with logic with noise kapil listen to me kapil 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 okay now i'm moving on i'm moving on i'm moving on round 1 is over round 1 is over i'm moving on kapil now because you mentioned about the food security act and we know the rights based approach of the congress party during upa 1 and upa 2 everything is the right take the right for this take the right for that no responsibility no duties including of the congress party perhaps but listen the congress manifesto or the mva manifesto brings in or talks about something called right to disconnect i mean is it serious i mean is this serious like whom are you addressing this to Never what is the it. right to disconnect like i can switch off my data like i do on a flight or something so abhishek abhishek i do get your i i i know bjp is being cornered here so you want to you know take away the debate in a completely different direction no i am having a structured conversation you, just a minute abhishek let, let, let me just let me just so let me just give like a few like important points here let me give a few important points here sanju would agree with me that honorable prime minister modi promised that farmers income will get doubled <coughs> by 2022 did this happen the question and is farmers you income has question. doubled We in all the last know the five years, rural income has risen from eight thousand rupees all, to almost thirty thousand five hundred rupees. You know, it's For serious. It's serious because you know Maharashtra is a state which, unfortunately, so reports high number, high number of farmer suicides. There's more than a fifty-eight percent jump in rural incomes in the last five years. Sanju. More than fifty-eight percent jump in rural my, incomes my, in the last five years, as per Niti Aayog. As per the government data, as per the government data, is the farmer income jumping? You talk about Karnataka. 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 You failed. Yeah. How many universities you made? You failed. How many universities you made in last ten years? You failed. How many universities you made in last ten years? You raised diesel prices by three rupees per liter. You raised petrol prices by three rupees per liter. You raised diesel prices by four rupees per liter. You raised diesel prices by four rupees per liter in Karnataka. Himachal Pradesh me CRP inquiry chal rahi hai on missing samosas. Are you not ashamed of your Himachal CRP? Sanju, why are you again and again going to Himachal when you yourself want the conversation to happen on Maharashtra, Sanju? This is the second time you have gone to Himachal. Maharashtra. He is not talking about Maharashtra. Let him talk about Maharashtra. Muslim appeasement. You are saying 10 percent reservation. Then you Muslim man of God. How can then you 10 percent reservation? Upper limit of 52 percent has been reached. Can we come in, in here? Yes. In Maharashtra. Okay. Let, I have to. I have to. I have to broaden the debate now. I have to broaden the debate now. You see, uh, let me get in the Shiv Sena on 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 the on on the debate now. The 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 Uddhav Sena and the Shinde Sena. Uh, sanju has been harping on the appeasement politics part in fact during the manifesto release union home minister amit shah mentioned how the party envisions bringing in the rule of shiva chatrapati shivaji maharaj and while saying so he said can the shiv sena ask the congress party whether they would take the name of shivaji maharaj whether the congress party would take the name of savarkar so my question to you mr chandrashekar jha is that apart from the development economics part which obviously should be part of the manifesto there is an ideological position which political parties take and amit shah has challenged you can you ask your ally to speak on chhatrapati shivaji maharaj on veer savarkar mr ja see these kind of narratives are being made when you don't have any issues uh, contesting the opposition and these types of challenges are 
uh, without any uh, kind of noise and we don't seem to take these type of challenges. These are not serious challenges, but serious challenges what? They, BJP is playing a diversity policy in Maharashtra. How? They have made Muslim reservations in Andhra Pradesh. They have categorically made Muslim reservations in Andhra Pradesh. They say that we are doing appeasement politics. Who has started this? Mr. Devendra Padnavis in 2018, 1st December, his statement is there that Muslims can be reserved and be given reservation category in Maharashtra in accordance with law not and true. that has to be construed. That is always true because it is on fact, it is on record. No, it, I mean, it cannot be denied. Record that this is. Record after you Second it. thing is that if you say the uh, kind of uh, uh, government which has been run, there was a law and order issue. There is complete disaster of law and order in this state. Last three months, if you see, many issues have popped up with regard to law and order issues. None have been addressed, none have been adjudicated. So these type of issues which are having importance in this state have not been addressed. Categorically, what is the address? Address is vote GR, address is appeasement policy, address is something uh, which is beyond the uh, purview of the government. Abhishek, can I so come in now? These kind of issues... These yeah, I'm kind coming of to you, Mr. Hegde, I'm coming to you. These kind of issues are not at all helpful for them. Okay, Mr. Krishna Hegde, uh, though of course uh, Mr. Jha sort of sidestepped my question which was on whether the Uddhav Sena can ask the Congress party to clarify its position on Veer Savarkar and Shivaji Maharaj, whether Shiv Shahi vote bank. No, which, no, they can't because which, now which they have Sena, the Uddhav Bank claims Club members, to be so they cannot talk about having a legacy on. They will be shunted out of the Mahavikas Agadi. So firstly, they will be shunted out of the Mahavikas Agadi if they ask any such questions. Firstly, it is a shame that Swatantra Veer Savarkar ji is being called by the Congress as Mafi Veer Savarkar and these people who are talking about Hindutva can't do anything. Secondly, let me tell you and clarify Devendra Fadnavis' stand in 2018 uh, in the assembly. He spoke about Maratha reservation and when the Muslim MLAs asked him about reservation for Muslims, so he said that I will talk so to the Muslim evidence. MLAs so and then we will so decide on what can evidence. be done or what cannot be done. He has never, nowhere confirmed or given a nod for Muslim reservation. So Thirdly, so this is a blatant so lie. Third so thing, I must tell you so that today, not so far, today, 2024, let him complete. Let, let, Mr. Mr. Jha, let him complete. Let him complete. This not going to get reservation. Mr. Jha, let Mr. Krishna Hegde complete. Now and not in the future. They are not going to get reservation. Thirdly, let me tell you, the Mahavikas Agadi has a full list of, uh, you know, in the manifesto, whether it is a Ladli ban or the free bus travel, or, uh, you know, support to the farmers, or jobs, or, uh, farmers, you know, farmers, uh, farmers, uh, farmers, pension you for to young uh, job seekers. This is already been done by a government. This is already been done by a government. And the Mahayuti has been doing it for the last two years under the, under the leadership of Eknath Shindeji, Devendra Fadavis and Ajit Pawarji. And over that, not only the free travel, we are given crop insurance, we are given free power to farmers, we are given uh, schemes for senior citizens. Apart from the Lake Ladli, Ladli Ban, Vayoshri Yojana and the umpteen number of Yojanas we have. So they have just, you know, done a copy paste of our manifesto, of our schemes and they are talking about it. And over that they are going to fulfill. Are, how are they going to fulfill? You, for you two years, for two and a half years, your CM has not gone to Mantra Life two times. Your CM was doing Facebook Live and not coming out of his house. In COVID, when he was administrating the state, there was 6,000 crores of uh, COVID, uh, you know, scam, 12,000 crores of uh, the infrastructure scam. Vasuli from Metro, metro uh, you know, contractors, Vasuli from Atal State to contractors, Vasuli from uh, uh, Coastal Road contractors, Vasuli from everybody, RH head contractor, Vasuli, it was called the Ma Vasuli Agad. Agadi. The bombs were planted under industrialist houses and every infrastructure project in Mumbai was at a standstill. And all the <coughs> no, 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 what is the point? I mean, I, I, Krishna Hegre is making a point of law and order. Against you. Mr. Ja, Krishna Hegre is making a point of law and order. He is not making a point on capitalism versus crony so, capitalism. When, yeah, Krishna when Hegre. our government came back into power, all the industries came back, Eknath Shindeji got 
थ्री लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड क्रोर इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम डेवॉस एटी नाइंटी परसेंट ऑफ द एमओयूज वॉज साइन एवरी वन केम रशिंग बैक टू महाराष्ट्र महाराष्ट्र इज टूडे नंबर वन इन इंडस्ट्री कॉमर्स एजुकेशन एग्रीकल्चर एंड वॉट नॉट एंड देर फोर All the schemes which we are giving the people, forty-six thousand crores for Lali Bena, okay. and now fifty-six thousand crores after the increase. Maharashtra has got a five hundred billion dollar economy and rushing to a one trillion billion dollar economy, and therefore we can afford to give these schemes. Okay, Mr. Hegde, like Himachal Pradesh and Telangana where they cannot afford, and like so, Maharashtra can afford to be a five hundred billion dollar economy going on to one trillion dollar economy because one third of India's taxes come from Mumbai alone. Nah. So obviously, give, give, Maharashtra has the wherewithal to be the first one trillion dollar economy state in the country, and it should. But you see, uh, I have to just announce that uh, Mr. Brajmohan Shivastav. Uh, who's the chief spokesperson of the ncp ajit pawar faction has joined in and kapil madan has uh, left because he had to go and uh, in his place we have gyanendra mishra he leans towards the congress party so the panel is complete again okay the the, the question i have is uh, you see on the issue of it's a very interesting election by the way happening in maharashtra sanju you would agree the kind of confusion that the voter on the ground would be facing you know there are two shiv senas there are two ncps um you know the eknar shinde says that uh, coalition dharm is not being followed by the bjp some leaders at least and uh, you know whom i am talking about uh in this state of confusion i think the bjp manifesto sort of partly co-opting the freebie culture of course there is justification that sanju verma gave that okay fine it's a rich state we can afford it so long as we are aware of that red line between uh, what is freebie and what is welfare the fact of the matter is it's a little confusing election for the voter to choose uh, and then on let me let me get in other people also into the conversation uh, pooja mishra sanju has been saying that the opposition campaign is just about minority appeasement and we saw what happened yesterday with the ulema so. board coming in and uh, coming out rather with a long list of demands which can classify as muslim manifesto almost like the 14 point charter of mohammad ali jinnah of 1940 you know the lahore resolution it's unfortunate that it's happening in our politics even today and irrespective of whether nana patole accepted it or not pooja mishra the fact of the matter is that just as you can accuse the bjp of playing hindu politics the opposition is playing muslim politics abhishek let me uh, take your attention to the uh, manifesto because we are discussing about the manifesto the dean accept the letter of our amle okay the dean put that uh, whatever we demanded in that letter uh, into their manifesto so abhishek asking for right to marginalize community if i think being a pooja mishra if i think my community is marginalized it's according to uh, constitution that i can ask for extra attention for my community that the mla do does and he can ask even the government no matter who the government is ruling party also can uh, he can ask uh, uh, that right to for the ruling party too but let me bring your attention towards the uh, manifesto i, I heard the uh, mahayuti sports person uh, that is shindhi nath group he says that the uh, mahavikas aghadi has copied the manifesto of mahayuti no they are one step ahead than you you are not talking about the welfare of women you are talking about the only financial aid and i won't Want no, I think there are a lot of promises made for welfare of women. Uh, Pooja Mishra in the in the Mahayuti manifesto, uh, so, in the know, BJP don't manifesto. You know, don't you know? No, don't you know? No, no don't you? Know? I'm talking about the cervical cancer, the free vaccine, the free vaccine which MBA is talking about. You you know that about 1.25 lakh women are suffering from cervical cancer every every year in our country. And seventy-five thousand women die every year due to this cervical cancer. And we contribute twenty-five percent of that due to cervical cancer. The MBA is addressing that, and that aligns with the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal of our country. The third point. And talking about the uh, again, 
the bjp what the uh, mahayuti is talking about mahayuti is always talking about the financial aid they are not addressing the current issues they don't have the proper agenda proper road map they are talking about the freebies only and they are not you, you are talking about the skill development what about the current generation what about the current youth unko nokri chahiye unke bare mein aapko baat hi nahi karni hai aap baat kar rahe now she was talking about the income of maharashtra how much debt maharashtra has you need to address that too the i think and they have okay. okay. very bad has... issues okay hold on sanju sanju hold on sanju hold on sanju hold on. I knew sanju, it. I knew it. You know, sanju let her complete i'm coming to you i'm coming to you sanju you get to revert but let her complete let her complete i'm coming to you sanju let her complete i'm coming to you sanju she she is she is making an important intervention sanju listen to her and you get to revert take the state of india take down the points and you get to revert point by point let her complete okay pooja mishra complete you were you asked about the law of disconnect do you know what the, the law of disconnect says this the next says that if you are under law of jihad you are why are you against i will have a segment on law of jihad sanju hold on let her complete why are you against the conversion bill hold on i am coming to the conversion bill hold on hold on sanju hold on main radical islamist samajh raha hu ki mere point ka jab aapke mein bhi interfering ओके पूजा होल्ड ऑन पूजा 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 होल्ड ऑन पूजा होल्ड ऑन पूजा होल्ड ऑन पूजा होल्ड ऑन पूजा पुल बैक आई हैव टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ संजू वर्मा सिंस संजू वांट्स टू फोकस ऑन लव जिहाद एंड एंटी कन्वर्जन बेल एक्सेट्रा संजू संजू कैन यू टेक द क्वेश्चन नाउ संजू कैन यू टेक द क्वेश्चन नाउ पूजा पुल बैक कैन आई आस्क पूजा टू पुल बैक नो बडी इज गेटिंग एनी वन नो बडी इज अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट्स हैपनिंग Sanju are you aware that people watching are not able to make out who saying what it's a din hold on hold on hold on pooja mishra hold on pooja mishra hold on okay sanju since sanju since you want to focus only on love jihad and appeasement and anti conversion law please tell us the please tell us the anti conversion bill anti conversion law as a promise was part of bjp's 2019 manifesto also why in the last two and a half years you did not bring the anti conversion law in maharashtra you know abhishek i want to say one thing very clearly to you that even in karnataka we had brought the anti conversion bill it was supposed to become an act but the moment sidaramaiah government came to power the first thing they did pooja mishra i'm not allowing that pooja hold on pooja pull back <laughs> pooja pull back pooja pull back pooja hold on okay sanju on anti conversion law then i move on okay sing ya ka ko mohit khan aapka neta rapist hai mohit khan ko pehle condemn karo baad mein bjp ko bhashan do chalo mere sath bolo ki mohit khan ke khimmat hai Sharad can you help me pull back both Sanju Verma and Pooja Mishra for a bit I am moving on you see Sanju we are having an interesting conversation let's make it even more interesting Sanju you see you're talking about vote jihad you're talking about vote jihad let's have a factual conversation whether vote jihad exists or not Okay Gyanendra Mishra do you agree or not whether vote jihad is happening because that's one of the key stump key subject of his stump speeches of bjp leaders in maharashtra including by devendra fadnavis and others you think vote jihad is happening in maharashtra and the bjp is right in making it an issue i think you know uh, abhishek that you know it is just an you know the political gimmick and again a polarizing agenda which is being put forward by the bjp i don't think that there can be and should be any love jihad and or vote jihad you know talking about the empowerment of every section of the society including the weaker section <coughs> can never be equated with vote jihad or love jihad etc etc these are the terminology which has been coined for the political expediencies 
for the political benefit, for the electoral benefit, without recognizing and realizing that such pushing such kind of an agenda is not <coughs> good for the nation, is not good for the society, not good for their development. Therefore, the moment you talk about empowering certain deprived section of society, be it is SC, be it ST, be it an economic vehicle section, you will start saying that you are dividing the nation on the basis of caste, you are dividing the nation on the basis of caste. Aren't you, aren't you actually dividing the nation on the basis of caste? Because caste census is part of the manifesto announced today, including... Yeah. A promise to remove the 50% cap on reservation, which is obviously aimed at getting in more castes into the reservation category. Yes. So, so therefore, these are the political issues which need to be dealt with the political politically, and ultimately, it is the electorate which will decide the validity and the relevance of such topics. But I, what a point I was trying to make is that if you try to make certain provisions for seemingly the weaker section of society, you cannot jump on the bandwagon and say that it is divisive, they are playing the jihad. I think these kind of terminology is not good. Pushing such kind of terminology in the electoral I mean, you know what happened, what is... is, is you know, uh, Garen yes. Mishra, just, just, you know, I, I understand this, this uh, sophistry that, you know, don't say things, don't say bad things. If bad things are happening on the ground, ground why don't you bring them to attention? Now, vote jihad, according to you, sounds really bad. Now, look at what's happening. In the Lok Sabha elections, in the month of June, look at the Dhule Lok Sabha seat. It has six assembly segments. Of the six assembly segments, BJP had a lead of 1,85,000 or 1,90,000 votes in five of those assembly segments. And in just one, Malegaon, the BJP, the Congress party got a lead of 1,95,000 votes and the Congress won by 4,000 votes. So obviously, there is something called vote jihad. It might sound awful. It should not happen, but it is happening, Janendra Mishra. So, so Abhishek, Abhishek, I think if there is anybody to blame for, I think it is the ruling dispensation. When unfortunately, the Honorable Prime Minister of the nation, when addressing the electoral rally, make reference to a particular community by, they, they are your Bhais Chor, they are your Mangal Sutra Chor, they, they will take away your women, they will take away your daughters. So if, if you push that kind of an agenda, that kind of a narrative into the politics, then what do you expect out of it? Do no, there is a reason that, that might be happening. Okay. There is a reason that why it might be happening. Bradmohan Shivastava, you get to defend it. But you see, the fact of the matter is that if one community is polarizing, and the other community is divided along caste lines, which the Congress party so happily wants, then obviously BJP is in the business of politics, right? They, may, they have Vindu, wish Vindu Parishad with them, but they are not there for sannyas. You see, they are in the business of getting into power. So they will do something, and for them, it's counter-polarization, getting the other community polarized. What's wrong with that? Gyanendra Mishra. I totally, I, I totally agree with you. Because the, this, this debate is started by the Congress, or we can say the Mahavika Sagari, or the INDIA. They have started this debate in the country. Why they have chosen the, the, the red book and why they have asked, uh, why they have started saying that the um, schedule caste will not get their right and the uh, constitution is going to be changed, this and that. So th these people when started creating a, a false narrative in the country, then it was obvious that the other political party will also raise the questions and they will expose them. So when we started exposing them, then then they, they realize that they they are uh, trying to get something wrong narration in the country. Um, now they are weeping. Now they are saying this thing, that thing. Why they have not seen our manifesto? When, once they will see the manifesto, then and c compare it with the uh, uh, your okay, manifesto. Okay, Krishna Hegre, Krishna Hegre, Krishna Hegre. Krishna Hegre. Krishna Hegre. Before I go back to the opposition, opposition side, Krishna Hegre. Because, because the moment, you know, I remember the top BJP leaders saying openly in the public that we don't need Muslim votes. 
We are only no, concerned with the 80 percent votes. We are not at all concerned. Rather, we don't want Muslim votes. We are not at all concerned with them. We are don't understand. We don't consider them as our voters. And if that is the narrative that you pull out in the open and then you expect that the certain community or the religious section will vote for you when the top leader comes openly and say that oh, I'm Sanju. not interested Sanju. in your Sanju. vote. Sanju. What I am, I am interested in is an 80% vote. No. Okay, Sanju, Sanju, Sanju. Sanju. Opposition party to Are the Sanju, you asking me to speak? You're not even showing me the screen. You didn't even ask me to speak. No, you are there on the so screen. Hey, Grace, you are there on the screen. I had asked you, but I think there was some issue with the audio. That's why Garnet Mishra no, got to there was nothing on the screen. Actually, let me educate Mr. Gyanendra because he's Okay, you go ahead, please. Yes. Firstly, you have already spoken about Love Jihad and given him the statistics. I will tell him about Love Jihad also, apart from the word Jihad. There was a committee formed by the government of Maharashtra to take into grievances all the intercaste issues which are happening between Hindus and Muslims. And that committee was flooded with grievances and a lot of people who by deceit get married with the name of Love Jihad and then oppress the Hindu girls and it is not a fallacy, it is not a fake thing, it is something happening really. Mr. Gyanendra should come down to grassroots level and find out how, how difficult it is, or how dangerous it is. And secondly, even in the word Jihad, 180 NGOs are today working with Muslim organizations trying to get their percentage of voting to 60 plus percentage and that has happened in the Lok Sabha election and they are going to repeat this in the Vidhan Sabha election also. So I urge all Hindus to come out and vote 100% to counter that and that is very important. If, if no, That sir, is why it's they, it's the Prime Minister has said Batenge to cutenge or saath rahenge to safe rahenge. Sanju, okay, Krishna Hegre ji, Krishna Hegre ji, let me take this to Sanju. Sanju, you know, I, I, I agree, I agree with the development pitch from Atal Setu to Navi Mumbai airport to that uh, corridor, you know, along the, the coastal highway that has been created in Mumbai. But then when come elections and the BJP is only about vote jihad, love jihad, anti-conversion law, you know, batenge to katenge. That is also happening. That so is obviously also that's, that's your point. key election pitch, Sanju. No, no, that is not okay, the key election just, pitch. Let, me, let me make a few points now, please. It's my turn to speak. Let me speak. Abhishek, you are very versed with uh, Mumbai. You know there is this institute called Tata Institute of Social Sciences. Tata Institute of Social Sciences ki aaj tak koi bhi report BJP ke favor mein nahi hai. They are anti-BJP. I have no forms in saying that. They say they are anti-establishment, but that's a different story. Tata Institute of Social Sciences has just released a report barely 48 hours back where they say that the Hindu population in Maharashtra was 88% in 1961. Currently, as per 2011 census, the Hindu population is down to 66%, whereas the Muslim population has risen from 8% in 1961 to 21% in 2011 as per the 2011 census. Then the Tata Institute report says that in the year 2011, the Hindu population will be down to 54% in Maharashtra and Muslim population in Maharashtra will rise to 3-0-30%. That is so unfortunate. Hindu population is down to 66% in Maharashtra. Sanju, Sanju, please wake up and smell the coffee. Okay, Sanju. Please wake up and smell the coffee. Hindu population is declining. Sanju, Sanju, Sanju. I have. Okay, Sanju, listen. 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 Sanju
minutes, Sanju. We are left with five minutes. Okay, Sanju, you know. Hold on, Sanju. Hold on, Pooja. Hold on, Ganesh Mishra. Hold on, Mr. Pradmon Shivastav. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. Okay. Why are they not talking to radicals? Again, go for the top answers. Okay, look, uh, Pooja Mishra, you did not answer my question. I spoke, I gave a specific example about the vote jihad, which is a reality on the ground going by the Dhule Lok Sabha seat. Now, if one community, I'm not saying wrong, it's a democracy, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying if one community is allowed to polarize its votes in one direction, why do you object or call it communal if, the, uh, if an attempt is made, other community is not polarized, but if an attempt is being made to, you know, bring them together, why do you object to it, Pooja Mishra? Abhishek Ji, you know the uh, act, the People's Representation Act, what does that say? Being on constitutional post, you're a prime minister, you're a chief minister of a state, you can't give such a statement which can lead to even a community feel inferior. You're prime minister, you are chief minister, you can't say that. What if is that? What is that? You can't, you are tying down one side, and they should not be talking about it, and the other side is completely polarizing, and you are happy beneficiary of that. Okay, Sanju Verma, I think what you should be doing is instead of saying batenge to katenge, which sounds a little crude, maybe you should be saying united we stand, then perhaps Pooja Mishra would support you, Ganesh Mishra would support you and Chandrasekhar Jha would support you. Okay, let me take this forward. No personal comments, Sanju Verma, no personal comments. <laughs> I can't allow this. I can't allow this. I can't allow this. Everyone is speaking. I can't allow this. I can't allow this. Pooja, pull back. Let's have a little bit of a sensible debate. Only last two minutes left. Only last two minutes left. Let me structure this. Manifesto says that all Muslims who have been arrested since 1992 should be freed, which means perpetrators of the 1993 Mumbai blast. They want those people should be released. 250. What is this Ganendra Mishra? From where is this coming, Ganendra Mishra? Ganendra Mishra. Ganesh Mishra, from where is this coming? From where is this coming? This is not, is this not appeasement politics? Is this not crassest appeasement politics which plays with your national security, our national security, Ganesh Mishra? Sanju, let him respond now. Sanju, let him respond now. Who have been falsely implicated because of their religious orientation, the justice will be done you know, for them. Mishra, they from will be subjected to onwards, fair The Congress party has been in power in Maharashtra for at least half of the time. Implicated because of their religious orientation. And this is what the manifesto says, that if someone because of his value, religious orientation or religious affiliations has been prosecuted maliciously, the justice will be done. The law will be applied equally and the justice will be done to each and every section of the society and nobody will victimize because of their religious orientations or religious affiliations. Nobody is getting what they are saying. Nobody is getting what they are saying. Okay, Chandrasekhar Jha, Chandrasekhar Jha, my question to you, Chandrasekhar Jha. You know, just day before yesterday, Sharad Pawar gave an interview. Now, it's interesting. Sanju, you should listen to it. A specific question was asked of Sharad Pawar on the chief minister's face. Now, quoting him, we have decided not to finalize a single name. After elections, if we get a majority, the party among our partners which gets higher seats will decide at that time. Now, during the Sarah speech, Chandrasekhar Jha, your leader, Uddhav Thakre, you know, dissed this idea of uh, the biggest, larger party, you know, getting to say, decide who becomes the chief minister. Obviously, the larger party gets its leader as the chief minister. Now, obviously, Uddhav perhaps knew that he is not going to become the largest party. And uh, 
Sharad Pawar believes that largest party should get the chief minister's chair. And in fact, in the alliance seat sharing that has happened, it seems Sharad Pawar has really trumped both the Shiv Sena Uddhav and the Congress party. You are at a disadvantage, Chandrasekhar Jha. On the day that the manifesto has come out, you think that Sharad Pawar has foxed Shiv Sena and your leader. See, these things will come out after the elections. The results will show uh, what will be the situation. All the three alliance partners will sit and decide upon that issue. So that is not a uh, question here. The question is that when EJP is doing a vote bank politics, appeasement politics, Mr. Ajit Pawar himself no, has sir, raised no, the yeah, issue of I... Muslim a reservation in the month of October. So NCP, NCP, Sir Pawar Group, group is also and here. He can answer on that because these, these all the three alliances are not working together. And and this issue has been raised by Mr. Ajit Pawar. He says that 10% reservation in the assembly seats and 5% reservation in education for Muslim communities. So so what kind of vote they have is being practiced by BJP? Everybody should know. And how what about Sanju Verma? What about the 2018 Devendra Fadnavi's statement that maybe some section of Muslims can be given reservations? Since you are talking about no, appeasement, he said, he said I will only talk to the MLAs. He didn't say anything that some reservation can be given to the Muslims. So Mr. Jha is just misleading the nation here. I must tell you very clearly, there was a debate in the house, and he said that we will talk to the Muslims. No, no, in the month of October, it's before elections. Again, you are saying something. Again, it is on record. So, Again, you are saying something. Again, it is on record. Again, you are saying something. 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 Again, you are and of course, Krishna Hegre and Sanju Verma. We had a nice, lively conversation. Sometimes everyone talking over the din, but that's how fantastic democracy works. And we are a fantastic democracy. Remember, in the same interview that Sharad Pawar gave to the newspaper, he also said that some populist schemes that the Mahayuti government has announced in the last few months are actually perhaps having a positive impact for them and we will have to take that into account. So obviously BJP is now batting on the same turf as the Congress party. It would be interesting how it pans out. Thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us in this conversation. Friends, uh, the time has in fact now come once again when the greatest economic minds of India will gather under one roof and discuss the driving forces behind our thriving economy. The Public Media Network presents to you the fourth edition of the India Economic Summit, Vikasit Bharat Bullsai, a platform where topmost ministers, visionary policymakers, renowned economists, and influential industry leaders and entrepreneurs will chart India's economic future. Tune in on Tuesday, November 12th, that's day after tomorrow, for all the live action here on Republic. Thanks for watching this Sunday.